As a baby, you had no choice but to rely on your parents to provide care and nurture a bond with you. In fact, this is such a natural bond that it happens almost instantly for the newborn child, regardless of who their parents are or how they treat them. And so it's no surprise that trauma bonding is especially common among children with narcissistic parents. So what is a trauma bond? A trauma bond is when you feel attached to someone who has hurt you, whether it's physically, emotionally, or mentally. It's kind of like being stuck in a cycle of love and pain, where you feel like you can't live without that person, even though you know they're hurting you. The trauma bond develops through a pattern of abuse and positive reinforcement. This is what you may hear referred to as intermittent reinforcement. So there can be a whole lot of abuse and then what feels like kindness or love. And that's what creates the trauma bond. It's the intermittent nature behind it. My name is Christina and this channel is dedicated to recognizing and breaking free from emotional abuse. If this is a topic that has touched your life, consider subscribing. You'll find that this is a very supportive community and we'd love to have you here. And if you're in the stage where you're just figuring things out, I have a free resource on the stages of narcissistic abuse that you may find helpful. You'll find a link for that in the description box. So let's get to the 10 signs you are trauma bonded to your parents. The first sign is that you refuse to acknowledge their abusive actions as wrong. And you may be in different stages of this place, but it takes a lot to get to the point where you can actually say that this was abusive behavior. So you may struggle to view your parents as bad because you've mixed the good with the bad, or you've merged the two in your mind. Or you may have convinced yourself that their actions are just a form of love and that their love for you means that their harmful behavior doesn't matter. It's kind of like you're telling yourself, well, it's okay because I know they love me. So people who have experienced this type of abuse can have a really difficult time identifying what's wrong with their situation. Even if they feel something isn't quite right. Can't put your finger on exactly what it is that's wrong. And this happens because abusive people are really good at confusing their target and making them feel like they're never really on stable ground. If you can relate to this, you might always feel like the other shoe is about to drop. So a parent who's abusive may inflict enough harm to break down your sense of self-worth, but not enough to push you away completely. They may also show just enough kindness to make you overlook or justify their abusive behavior or convince you that somehow it's acceptable. If you're in this place now, or if you have been in this place before, you were probably making excuses to defend their abusive behavior. And it's true that most people are very likely to defend their parents and justify their parents' actions. But with people who have had abusive parents, you'll find that the justification extends into things that rationally probably shouldn't be justified at all. So if you're in this place, you might say things like, they didn't mean it, or it's just their way of showing love. And not only do comments like that excuse that parent's behavior, but it normalizes abusive behavior, which can be really dangerous on a larger scale. So how does this happen? Well, if you identify with this, your parents probably didn't tolerate you challenging them. So questioning your parents was never an option. So if you couldn't challenge them, your only option was to justify and defend. And as part of that justification, you may have blamed yourself for all or parts of the abusive behavior. You might think if you were better, your parents would have treated you better. But we know now that is not true. You may have also experienced gaslighting about the way you were treated. And this can lead to you comparing your situation to others. You might say things like, well, it wasn't that bad. And you know, so many people have it so much worse. So I'll, I'll just sound like a whiner if I complain. But really what you're referencing when you say if I complain is really just talking about and acknowledging the abusive behavior. So another sign that you might be trauma bonded to a parent is that you fear confrontation. Toxic parents can be incredibly unpredictable and volatile. They might get mad at you for something as simple as forgetting to put away the dishes or not answering their text messages fast enough. And when they get mad, they make sure you know it. They might throw an angry fit or on the other hand, move towards stonewalling or silent treatment. So 
What do you do when you're living with someone like that? You try your best to avoid setting them off. You might start cleaning the house obsessively or constantly checking your phone to make sure you don't miss a call or message. Do everything you can to keep from setting this person off. You might even start monitoring your own thoughts and feelings just to make sure you're not thinking anything that could upset them. Because if you can relate to this, you've probably had a parent who would tell you how you feel and you would get in trouble for it. It's exhausting and it's unfair. No one should have to live like that. So another sign that you may be trauma bonded to a parent is that you confuse abuse with love. When your parents are abusive, you may not learn what real healthy love looks like. Our parents are here to teach us how to relate to others. And if they're teaching us patterns of intermittent reinforcement, that's what gets encoded as love. So for example, you might think that your parents' toxic actions are a form of tough love. You might see narcissistic behaviors like being overly dependent, controlling, or jealous as love. For example, you might think that your mom interferes with your friendships because she cares about you, not because she's controlling. Or you might think that your dad calls you ugly because that kind of good natured negging is just his way of showing love. When you're in a trauma bond, you might feel like you're not good enough or that you deserve to be treated badly. This can lead to things like anxiety, depression, and low self-esteem. So another sign that you may be trauma bonded to a parent is you feel dependent on their compassion. So it's natural to hope that your parents will listen to you and understand your pain, but some parents just aren't willing to do that. Instead, they may use the opportunity to make things worse or to make it all about themselves, to make them the victim. And this happens especially when you're trying to tell them how their actions or words made you feel. So if you relate to this, you may feel like you get stuck in cycles of justifying why they should be more compassionate and why they should respect you and your feelings. These conversations never go anywhere, but they may feel like your only line of defense. So another sign that you may be trauma bonded to your parents is that you don't easily trust or act on your instincts. So imagine you come home from school and your parent starts yelling at you for no apparent reason. They say things that hurt your feelings and make you feel small. But when you try to stand up for yourself, they deny ever saying those things at all. It's like they're trying to make you think you're crazy. And this is what we call gaslighting. Gaslighting is when an abuser tries to manipulate your reality. They may tell you that something that happened didn't really happen or that you're overreacting to their behavior. You're being too sensitive. This can be really confusing and hurtful because you start to doubt your own thoughts and feelings. Abusive people use gaslighting to make their abuse seem like it's not really abuse. But this is just another way of manipulating you. Don't let anyone convince you that you're crazy or overreacting. You deserve to be treated with respect and kindness. So another sign you're trauma bonded to your parents is you think you can't survive without them. Narcissistic parents don't prepare you for the real world, and that's the sad truth. Instead, they make you think you need them in order to survive. They may even tell you that you're a loser who can't do anything without them. And it can be really difficult to imagine leaving the only source of comfort that you have, even if that source is completely toxic. It's strong, but here's the thing. You are stronger than you know. If you can relate to this, you can start working through these pain points in therapy and building a support system that you can actually rely on. So another sign that you're trauma bonded to your parents is you believe the lies and faux apologies. So if you relate to this, you keep hoping they're going to change and treat you better, but it doesn't happen. So when they come back around and apologize, and they promise to treat you better, or maybe they just even act caring and supportive. You hold on to the toxic hope that this time they've changed. You think that if you just give them another chance, they'll finally see the error of their ways. But people don't change so easily, especially if they've shown narcissistic patterns 
for a lifetime. So when you're sorting all this out, you may have trouble breaking free from the idea that your parents are always right and have your best interests at heart. But if you're seeing signs to the contrary, just keep paying attention. And most importantly, pay attention to how you feel when you're around them. Another sign that you may be trauma bonded with a parent is that you get annoyed with anyone who tries to get you to see the truth. Sometimes when people are being abused, they push away the people who are trying to help them. And they do that because it can be really hard to hear that your parents or loved one, that somebody you love is hurting you. And so if you're in that place, it feels like living in denial or staying is better than facing the truth and having the difficult conversations that may come as a result. So the next sign is that you feel stuck or otherwise unmotivated to leave. Narcissistic parents will often use fear or guilt to make it hard for their children to leave. And sometimes the abusive parent will also shame you for sticking around. We're talking about some really complex dynamics and you're always gonna have internal and external struggles going on. So do your best to approach it with patience and have compassion for yourself. And in addition to being compassionate with yourself, there are some steps you can take. So first you can seek professional help. Consider talking to a therapist or counselor who can help you work through whatever trauma you've experienced and develop a plan for moving forward that works for you. Another thing you can do is learn all you can about trauma bonding. Educate yourself about the concept and how it affects people. This can take some of the shame and self-blame away from it. When you understand that this is a natural reaction to what you've been through, it can quiet that voice in your head that might be telling you you're weak or you're not strong enough. And from there, you can start to develop some healthy coping mechanisms. So if you've related to all of this, creating healthy boundaries is not optional, it's essential. Set clear boundaries with your parents and stick to them. This may involve, for some of you, limiting contact or even cutting ties altogether. Very personal decision. So don't let anyone pressure you in either direction. And another thing you can do is focus on self-care because that can really ease the impact of the trauma bond. Take care of yourself physically, emotionally, and mentally. And this can include activities like exercise, meditation, therapy, or spending time with supportive family and friends. There are so many ways that you can practice self-care. Try to bring in as as many as you can. So if you made it to this point, I'm gonna do something I've never done before. And I'm going to suggest that you actually go back and watch this video again. This time around, see how many of the patterns that you relate to from childhood that could also be applied to your adult relationships. We tend to repeat patterns until things are healed within us. And this exercise, <laughs> can be extremely eye-opening. And after you've done that, if you want to see a comparison between the trauma bond and real healthy love, watch this video right here. And I'll see you next time.